We started with New York City Opera, where the new director was interested in commissioning some contemporary art for the theater um, as part of their new program. And as it turned out, he realized that they had a huge inventory of unused costumes. And because of the nature of my work, one of the projects I've done is called Exploding Couture. He asked me if I'd be interested in working with the costumes, and of course, I said yes. Worked very closely with the costume designers in terms of learning about opera and why I was picking which costumes and how the costumes were constructed. When I take things apart, I really like to see how things are built, or it's more interesting anyway to take apart things that are really well built because there's just um, a lot more information in the, in the structure and it's a lot about architecture and sculpture, in fact. They are at moments of transformation. These are costumes that have been taken apart, put back together, stretched, tightened, loosened, changed, and they're transforming into new, um, new works of art. There are sculptures that are also performance. They clearly look like they're moving. There's a, there's a dynamism in each of these, not only in Cinderella, who actually moves, but in all of them. So they are sculpture, performance. In many ways, they reference architecture. You see the infrastructure um, exposed of these dresses. They are, we, this is really multidisciplinary work, which is one of the reasons that appeal very much to Art Without Walls. But of course, it's the perfect collaboration with a performing arts organization like the Kentucky Center. How we understand women is a lot through the style of clothing that they wear or how they are depicted being in a costume really tells the story of who the character is. And in opera, most of the women characters, or the main woman character, usually dies or has some terrible demise. And so it's by using the costume that is the stand-in for the character itself. And um, this is a way of being able to tell a story through the costume. Women's stories are often told by and are judged and rated and understood by how they look and appear. With this piece, Cinderella is a particularly wonderful example of that, where we have Cinderella in her princess gown, and then we also have her as the distressed peasant Cinderella with the stepsisters. Um, and you don't really need an actor inside there to tell the story. The costume sort of does it all itself. And the other thing is um, it's such a wonderful opportunity to get close to these costumes that are designed to be seen from the closest 30 feet away. I mean, they're designed to be seen from 150 feet away. Um, and so when they're built, they're not ordinary clothing. They are costumes. They're constructed. They are sculptures, in fact. So it's a great opportunity to get up close and see these things and how they're built. A lot are built with reflective materials and with all kinds of boning. 
and all kinds of undergarments to hold up all of the fabric and also they're using the finest fabrics. I mean, opera is the Olympics of the arts. It's the loudest voices, the most specific kind of voices, the biggest theaters, the biggest stages, um, the biggest personalities and the biggest stories. It has been the most serendipitous uh, art project that I have shepherded through in a long time. We've wanted to collaborate with the Kentucky Center um, for the last two years. Stephen Klein has been a terrific colleague and we looked at a number of different projects together. About four or five months ago, I received a phone call from James Solomon, who is, owns a wonderful gallery in New York who works with Evie Day, who said, I heard from a reporter from the New York Times that you like to collaborate with performing arts organizations. Have this installation that was only shown in New York for a very short amount of time. I've been a fan of Evie Day's work for the last 10 years since I saw um, a piece called Bombshell, which was an, a, for her first piece in her Exploding Couture series. It's, it's Marilyn Monroe's dress from the Seven Year Itch. That was in the Whitney Museum of Arts Biennial in 2000. I've been a fan of hers ever since then, and the idea of being able to work with her on a large scale project was thrilling. James very helpfully said the pieces are packed, they're ready to come to Louisville if you'd like them. We did a site visit, everyone got along, the pieces were beautifully packed, they came here, they stayed in storage for a few months, and they were installed last week with the help of the Kentucky Center's very skilled staff.